and the church say amen. Say amen one more game. And it's God been good to you. Woke you up this morning. Scarlet you on your way. How many of you have shown up been good in this place today? And if it had not been for the Lord on your side, you, who knows where you would be? Somebody said, I should be crazy about now, but God. How many you believe that? How many of the folk who've been broke before, but God has kept you this morning? The folk who've been through some storms this morning, but he spoke to the storm in me. Anybody know what I'm talking about this morning? Has he been so enough good church? Has he been your bridge over troubled waters? Has he been a way out of no way? Has he been a wheel in the middle of a wheel? Jacob's ladder, uh, Luke's suffering servant, uh, Matthew's word made clear. Anybody know what I'm talking about this morning? Amen. 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 Church, I, I'm here this morning. I'm here this morning to, to, to introduce one of our speakers this morning. This, this young man <laughs> is currently studying at the Greater Metropolitan Church of Christ University. <laughs> This young man is an avid student of the Word of God. Yeah. I'm so very proud of his growth and development yeah. and his studies. Yeah. And when your wife, amen, you, you're doing all right now. Yeah. I preach why I don't say nothing and just look down, amen. <laughs> amen. Uh, Brother Roten is in our Thursday night Iron Sharpens Iron class, and, and he is committed Every week he comes prepared. Uh, he studies his passages and he does an excellent job. And so I said to him, like, it's time for, as the Baptist church would say, do your trial service. <laughs> uh, but I said to him, I, I want the church to know that we are developing yeah. men in this church. I want you to know that, that we just don't we just don't come and eat chicken on Thursday night when we get into the word. And so throughout this year, you're gonna see you're gonna see the guys get up and do devotional messages. And uh, and Brother Roten is uh, the, the first to get up to do the devotional message uh, today. So he's gonna bring uh, the word. I told him, I told him we don't care about your delivery, we care about what you got to say. Amen. I told you, you'll you start hooping and hollering a little later on. Uh, but what's most important is what does say of the law. And then y'all, he sent me his outline, and he did a better outline than I have ever done. Primarily because I'm lazy, praise the Lord. But when I saw it, I said, he has really put time into this. So we're going to have Brother Avery to come up. He's going to sing a verse of a song. And after that verse, the next portion here will be Brother Brian Roten, doctoral candidate. <laughs> Thank you. 
his thumb about 20 times. <laughs>
or uh, for the sake of something else. Right. You see, our beliefs should impact our behavior. Yeah. And then Paul goes on to mention three types of sacrifices. A living, right. a holy, and acceptable. Right. Let's look at the living sacrifice. Yeah. You see, in the Old Testament, yes. uh, the believers offered dead sacrifices to, to Jesus. Right. But in the New Testament, we were asked to make a living sacrifice. Right. And the point is, God wants us to die to ourselves yeah. and live. Right. Okay. Holy is the next type of sacrifice. Holy is to just set apart from the world and belong it to God. Right, right. Yeah. Acceptable. Well, when you present your bodies as a living sacrifice, God is pleased. Yeah. And that makes it acceptable. So one might ask, how do you make a sacrifice? How do you sacrifice your body or life to Christ? Well, every day you wake up, you declare that you belong to God. Yeah. And you say, here, my Lord, use me. Yeah. Then you seek every opportunity to obey his word. Yeah. Go minister to somebody. Yeah. Do some work around the church. Yeah. Visit the sick. Yeah. Get involved. Go talk to somebody. Yeah. You see, then we need to take care of our bodies. And we need yes. to do, we need to eat right, we need to exercise. Right, right. Because it's difficult to serve a God when you're not healthy. Yes, so yes. that's just our responsibility, right. trying to be as healthy as we can be. Yes, yes. We know that sickness comes and that there's some things out of our control. But right. We yes. ought to be able to try to, we ought to try to control as much of our health as we can. Yes. Three, the, the next part of the very, very end of the verse, of chapter, verse one. This is your spiritual act of worship. That's right. Now let's talk about worship. Word, the word in the Greek is logikos. Where we get our English word logic, which is translated to reasonable. And I believe that in the King James Version, uh, it's used as reasons. And what Paul is saying here is that if you consider all that God has done for you, the sinful, dirty, filthy rags that we are, is to offer him to a body and to a body and to worship him. Yeah. And see, that's what we do at Greater Metropolitan History. Yeah. So what does the world say? 
Well, one, it says, if it feels good, do it. Well, the Lord says in John chapter 14, verse 27, he says, peace I leave with you. My peace I give to you. Not as the world gives to you, do I give to you. So we get our peace from God. We don't get our peace just by doing what we think feels good. And what else does the world say? It says, if we want it, go get it. Well, the Lord says in Philippians, the fourth chapter, the 19th verse, it says, God will supply all your needs according to his riches and glory in Christ Jesus. See, there's nothing that we won't have if we let God supply our needs. And then the world says, live for today and hope for tomorrow. Well, in Matthew 6, verses uh, 25 through 34, God tells us, do not worry about your life, about what the birds will eat, and just seek him first, and all things will be added to you. So we don't need to worry about tomorrow, because God has got that in control. The world also screams tolerance, being politically correct, gay marriage is legal, abortion is legal, all these things are legal, that's what the world says. But we as Christians, we need to fight against the ties of Satan. We need to fight against what the world says and stand up for Christ because our beliefs should impact our behavior. All right? And read on from what? All right, stop there. Paul uses the present tense of the verb. All right. Present tense of the verb, meaning that it's not an on and off. is the word metamorpho, which is where we get our English word, metamorphosis. And for those science majors or people that are familiar with science, metamorphosis is when a, a, a tadpole changes into a frog or a cocoon into a butterfly. See, that's a, a continuous process. And that's what we're supposed to be in our Christian life is They're two different things. A cocoon and a butterfly, they're, they're two different things. And what stage are you in in your Christian life? Where are you at in your transformation? The text continues. But one. But be transformed by the renewing of your mind. All right, stop. Like I said earlier, our mind fades. Every yeah. time we forget what the Lord does. So when a book expires at the library, what do we do? We have to go back and renew. Yeah. So got this, it works the same way as our minds. Yeah. We have to go back and renew. Yeah. So how do you do that, Jack? Well, first of all, you must saturate yourself with God and things. Yeah. Yeah. What are you putting in your mind? Yeah. See, what TV shows do you watch? Yeah. Are you watching Scandal? Oh. Walking Dead? God tells us to study and 
show your self approval. But Paul, Paul concludes here in the, the last uh, B, B clause of that verse. It's reading from the front right. Then you will be able to test and approve what God will is. That's right. I think the word there is prove, the key word. In the Greek, it is doxomazo, which means to put to the test or examine. And when you were in school, you took a test to prove that you understood the material that the teacher was, was giving you. And see, God works the same way. He gives us life tests to prove that we have read and understood his word. See, the, good, the will of God here reveals, deals with obedience to his general will. And as you may, God's revealed will, he will unveil his specific will in your life, which is good and acceptable and perfect. So in conclusion, I'd like to say, if you want to prove what the will of God for you is, then you must keep your mind renewed and stayed on Jesus. Die to the world and live with Christ. Give him your body and your life, which is your reasonable service. And due to his mercy. Now that was my take on Romans 12, 1 and 2. But see, Brother Williams teaches us in the class that once you get through exegeting the text, you must go back and you, you press the text. And you press it a little hard and you try to find something in there that you, you didn't see the first time. See, when I did that, I went back to verse 1 and, and I said, Therefore, I urge you, greater metropolitan. I once knew a man who, on oh God, got this hill and presented his body. Because he was God's son. And he had holes in his hand. H-O-L-E-S. And he had, he used his whole body, W-H-O-L-E, to carry the cross. So give him your reasonable worship. Okay, in verse 2, he did not conform to this world. He died to this world.
more of these guys getting up and, and doing what we showing what we do on Thursday nights. And if you are one of the brothers here, you don't come on Thursday nights. You get to see what you've been missing. You know, for someone like Brother Robert Luther had no formal theological training, but able to do what he did. It looked like he went to school, didn't it? He went to TM University.